the neon lights of the electronic music festival pulse through the night, casting flashes of blue and pink across the crowd. Creating an atmosphere of euphoria and excitement, Kenny stood among the chaos, her laughter briefly breaking the tension she carried deep within her. Her smile was radiant, yet, despite the jubilation surrounding her, a creeping fear gripped her heart. The shadows of her past loomed large. Kenny was scared for her life. This was the last time anyone would see her alive. The night was filled with an unspoken tension, a sense of foreboding that no one could quite place, but to understand how Kenny, a vibrant 26-year-old, found herself in this moment. One must go back and trace the story that led to this tragic night. Her life was filled with dreams and aspirations, a testament to her indomitable spirit. Kenny's story is one of hope, struggle, and, ultimately, a heartbreaking end that everyone saw coming. Kenny grew up with aspirations that ignited her imagination and fueled her drive for success. She envisioned a life filled with excitement, style, and social allure, where her beauty and charisma could open doors to new possibilities. As she matured, Kenny became increasingly aware of the opportunities available in the world of adult entertainment, a realm that promised both independence and financial gain. At just 23, Kenny made the heart-wrenching decision to leave everything behind in search of a better life. She packed her belongings and boarded a flight to Mexico, a country that had become a beacon of hope for many seeking fame and fortune. Upon her arrival, she was greeted not with open arms, but with the grim reality of a world she had never imagined. Kenny soon discovered that the promises of a better life came at a steep price. What initially seemed like an opportunity to secure the luxury and independence she craved quickly revealed itself as a double-edged sword. Faced with the challenge of making ends meet, Kenny was drawn into the underbelly of the entertainment industry, Zona Divas, a notorious website that connected clients with women offering explicit content and high-end escort services. The allure of quick earnings and the prestige associated with being part of an exclusive circle of sought-after women pulled her in, yet it was not without consequences. The pressure to maintain appearances and compete in a cutthroat environment weighed heavily on her pushing Kenny to sell not just her image but pieces of herself. This decision, while lucrative, became a choice that would follow her like a shadow, influencing every part of her life and ultimately contributing to her tragic fate. Women advertising on Zona Divas frequently found themselves exposed to significant dangers, ranging from exploitation and human trafficking to violence and even murder. The platform became infamous not just for its services but for the risks faced by those who participated in its ecosystem, laying bare the perilous intersection of sex work, digital anonymity, and systemic violence against women in Mexico. Other women that worked on this website suffered a tragic ending under different but similar circumstances. They were unalived all around the same time and in a similar fashion. Kenny became the face of the platform, quickly rising to prominence among its ranks. Her appearance was not just a calling card, it was a business strategy. She embraced her allure and confidently branded herself as the most expensive doll on display. This title reflected her understanding of her market value, charging clients between 2,000 and 5,000 pesos a night for her time. While her decision to sell her image and body brought financial rewards and a taste of luxury, it also entangled her in a web of complications and dangers that would haunt her in unexpected ways. Despite the facade of glamour, life as an escort was fraught with peril. Zona Divas operated for 17 years, profiting from the exploitation of foreign women, many of whom were coerced into prostitution. Kenny quickly learned that she was not just a pretty face. She was part of a brutal system controlled by powerful men who thrived on the vulnerability of women like her. Ignacio Santoyo Cervantes, also known as El Soni, was the puppet master of this dark world. He was notorious for silencing women who rebelled or sought to work independently, and many disappeared without a trace. Yet, despite the grim circumstances, 
Kenny's magnetic personality and striking beauty kept her afloat. She became a star of sorts on the platform, but the dangers lurking in the shadows were ever present. Her friends would later say, she liked the bad boys, a phrase that would come to define the path her life would take. Back in Venezuela, she had dated an ex-convict named Astolfo whose name was tattooed on her shoulder as a reminder of their tumultuous relationship. Their romance was passionate but dangerous, culminating in Astolfo's death during a confrontation with the police. This history of seeking out dangerous men followed her to Mexico where she found herself involved with Brian. He was a feared member of a gang, a notorious criminal group involved in drug dealing, extortion, and the trafficking of women. Brian was drawn to Kenny's looks, tall, blonde, and slender, matching his standards for the women he pursued. Their relationship started with a whirlwind romance, filled with extravagant gifts and romantic escapades. However, it quickly devolved into a toxic cycle of control and manipulation. To no one's surprise, because everyone saw this coming, everyone but Kenny herself. By October 2017, Kenny decided to end their relationship, but breaking free from Brian was not as simple as she had hoped. His temper flared, and he began to issue threats, a tactic to exert his dominance over her. Despite having a new girlfriend, he could not let go of Kenny sending her chilling messages that made it clear he was still obsessed with controlling hers. The situation escalated when Brian's new girlfriend, Karen, was found dead, shot in the head, a victim of the very violence that Kenny had tried to escape. He sent Kenny a menacing message. I already killed her. You're next. Terrified, Kenny went into hiding, fearing for her life. She stopped going out, living in a self-imposed prison as she grappled with the knowledge that Brian killed for fun, his violent nature fueled by a need for control. Despite the growing danger, Kenny refused to leave Mexico. Her passport had expired and leaving the country would mean facing significant difficulties in returning making her feel trapped. Additionally, she failed to grasp the true severity of Brian's threats until it was too late, underestimating just how far his violent tendencies would go. Kenny's situation weighed heavily not only on her, but also on her mother, who had always been deeply intuitive and vigilant. Her mother, who smoked tobacco and read tarot cards, felt an unshakable sense of foreboding. The cards consistently pointed to danger, warning that Kenny's fate was somehow tied to a dark alley. Desperate and anxious, her mother pleaded with Kenny to leave Mexico, urging her to escape the looming threat before it was too late. At one point, her mother's fear turned to anger, born out of frustration that Kenny did not heed her warnings. The urgency in her voice was underscored by a mother's instinct and the grim visions she saw in the cards. Yet, despite her mother's fervent attempts and the ominous messages from the tarot, Kenny felt anchored by the expired passport and the belief that Brian's threats were just words. She underestimated his potential for violence, not realizing how close she was to becoming another victim of his twisted need for power. Kenny knew she could not remain silent forever. In a desperate attempt to expose her abuser, she posted a video on social media revealing the bruises and injuries Brian had inflicted on her, a cry for help that would sadly go unheard. On February 24, 2018, Kenny took a rare step outside her confinement. 
to attend a music festival, accepting an invitation from clients. It was a moment of normalcy, a fleeting attempt to reclaim her life. The festival pulsed with energy and for a moment she felt free. But it was a facade that would soon shatter. Two days later, her body was discovered in a dark alley. Her face unrecognizable from the brutal violence she endured. Signs of rape and torture were evident, a horrific testament to the violence she had faced. The very dark alley her mother had warned her about. The prime suspect was none other than Brian, the man who had haunted her final days. Kenny's tragic story didn't end with her death, it became a painful symbol of how a young woman's pursuit of a better life can be twisted into a nightmare by violence and exploitation. Her life and death exposed the dark realities faced by many women in the sex industry, where dreams can quickly turn into horror stories. Today, her name stands as a reminder of the unseen battles fought by countless women urging us to remember that beneath the surface of glamour and allure there are stories crying out for justice. As the lights dimmed at the festival, a new awareness began to rise. Kenny's legacy would not be in vain. Her story became a rallying cry against the violence that plagues so many lives. The fight for justice, dignity and recognition of women's rights is ongoing and Kenny's spirit fuels a movement that seeks to break the cycle of silence and fear in memory of Kenny Fino. We must speak up, share our stories and demand change. For the memory of the most expensive doll in the showcase should inspire action, not silence. Between 2017 and 2018 the name Zona Divas became synonymous with horror and tragedy as a string of brutal murders exposed the dark realities lurking behind the escort site's glossy facade. The platform, a popular marketplace for women offering escort services in Mexico, operated in a space where safety nets were thin and accountability even thinner, during this period, five women who advertised their services on Zona Divas were found murdered, their deaths painting a harrowing picture of vulnerability and exploitation. What made these murders especially chilling was not only their frequency, but the context in which they occurred, a country battling endemic violence against women and impunity. The cases pointed to a broader and insidious problem. Women who operated on the fringes of society, particularly in sex work, were not just at risk. They were easy targets. Investigations into these murders revealed a troubling nexus of organized crime, human trafficking rings, and corrupt or indifferent law enforcement that left these women with nowhere to turn. Zona Divas itself became emblematic of this precarious environment, a digital marketplace that thrived on anonymity and drew the attention of dangerous figures. The women advertised services under the promise of autonomy and income, but in reality, many faced coercion threats and violence with few avenues for protection. The murders forced the public and authorities to confront the unregulated and perilous underworld of online escorting, prompting outrage and eventually greater scrutiny into how such platforms operated. Yet, the deep systemic issues surrounding violence against women and the culture of impunity remain significant barriers to meaningful change. What happened to Zona Divas? Finally, it's worth mentioning that ZonaDivas.com is offline. But in January 2019, 
the domain redirected to another website called cityfluff.com, which has been operating for 12 years and offers escort services in 134 countries around the world. Kenny's story ends as a tragic testament to the dangers of underestimating threats and ignoring the signs that point to peril. Her naivety and the pursuit of quick money set the stage for a series of choices that kept her in harm's way, each step inching her closer to danger. The dark alley, which had been a persistent warning in her mother's tarot readings, symbolized more than just a physical place. It was the embodiment of the unforeseen and violent fate waiting in the shadows. Despite the desperate pleas of her mother and the clear signs of escalating violence, Kenny chose to believe she was safe. But in the end, the dark alley she had been warned about became a metaphor for the risks she couldn't see and the danger she thought she could outrun. In the world Kenny inhabited, naivety and the lure of easy money proved to be a fatal mix, leading her straight into the very dark alley that had always been waiting for her.